I think, the most difficult concerto, not for the kind of obvious reasons, it's not full of like crazy technical stuff, but it's just hard to play. You know, they asked Heifetz once, what are the very hardest concertos to play on the violin? They expect him to say like Paganini or, you know, Ernst or something, and he said Beethoven and Mozart, because it shows everything. It shows every imperfection, and that's why it's fantastic for training. But of course, the first step is just kind of like learn how to play it, right? Learn the notes, you've got the basics down of it. But then it's a lifetime of kind of refining, of trying to figure out how to play, how to make sense of this, how to make musical sense, and how to get this kind of gracefulness and elegance, because it asks us to do awkward things um, and make them sound simple. You know, this if you sing this, you um, all of you guys, I, you know, I think if I ask you to sing it, you know immediately how to, you know, it's very simple, very, uh, very easy. You'd all sing it correctly. But when we pick up the cello, that's when the bad habits come in. You know, when we try to put that from our head onto the cello, a lot of times our hands start to become our habits. It happens a lot for cellists. Um, so let's start again now. Some of, some of the... You have a little bit different problems, but a lot of the Boeing stuff we talked about with JoJo, I would say also it's universally applicable because your fingers right now seem often quite tight on the bow. And when that happens, when there's kind of constant held tension, that's going to translate into your left hand too. That's going to make everything, it's like you're trying to like, you know, do some kind of delicate thing. Well, this arm is like, ah, you know, and you're trying to do something very, the, the minute you have held tension anywhere, it gets in your way. So it's always a question about how finding to relax. And a lot of that is often about strengthening the muscles, kind of conversely to what you think. The stronger you are, the less likely you are to be like uh, gripping all the time. So a lot of the bow exercises we just talked about with Jojo, uh, applicable for all of you guys. Um, and that, especially that one, two, the two finger thing should help a lot. But, well, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on that because you guys already heard that from me. But let's try this. Uh, let's try this opening for me. So there's on a lot of this is decoration, you know, which is typical in classical music. That's all that's really happening. By the way, okay, something I should tell you now, some of the ways, some of your fingerings are not optimal and I don't want to spend, so we have so limited time, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but again, Poirman, who we were talking about, actually, Norman Fisher studied with Klaus Adam, who was a student of Feuermann and had written Feuermann's fingerings for the Haydn D major into a score, so he made Norman copy those. Um, I... Um, I, I copied that out from, the, I like Xerox that and kind of assembled it into, I mean, it looks a little bit like a second grade art project, but it's got all of Feuermann's fingerings for the Haydn D. That's on my website. If you go, I can't remember exactly where it is, but if you look under one of those tabs on my website, it's just like brentnavelsmith.com, whatever. Um, you can find the Feuermann's fingerings for the Haydn and think about some of those, um, give you another set of options. I also have his fingerings for Shalomo as well as Zara's fingerings for Shalomo and gradually hope to get a few more things up there. But um, anyway, so that's, uh, that'll solve some of our fingering problems. Now, so now, everything has to have a priority. So I can't just play. Then it becomes monotonous, right? Everything's the, then the same. So if something has to. This is important. Then the next thing that's important is the A. So play with me this opening. Good, pretty good. Uh, you got the right idea for the emphasis. Be careful, and this is another cello habit that so many cellists do. Um, we get like comfortable in the note and then you probably hear yo-yo do this a lot. That is. 
If you can be as famous as him as it's okay, but otherwise people are going to yell at you. So, yeah. So, right at the start of the note. Instead of using the bow, foof, try to use left hand. Yeah, put that energy, which is the right kind of musical, emotional energy, but put it in the left hand for vibrato. Instead of going, put it in the... Uh, Try that. Good, let's go on. Now, if you buy, and by the way, if you don't change bow here, if you want to keep this in one bow, then I just, how do I articulate these notes if I'm not going to. I articulate by the blue. Remember the plucking off we were talking a little bit about? Uh, and then dropping it for the third. So that's why I saw it doesn't sound like. But. That's, so that's a lift and drop for the third finger to get that articulation and a little bit of a pluck to get the one. And just go right. Good, let's go on. Good, now you, uh, you kind of, you actually, you put a like break and then put an emphasis on the D, but actually, usually in music suspensions, and there's a lot of these in the Haydn D major, the suspensions are actually the most musically important part. It's the bass changes underneath. Held the end of the B is actually way more important than the D. It's not. It's. And that yeah, ha, 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 it's just a decoration of the B falling to the A. So uh, don't let go of this. And then uh, don't be don't be too hard on the D because that's already a top note. It's already going to sing out. And if you give it too much of emphasis, it's going to. You don't want that. Yum, so hold the B and then not too much on the D. Good, that might be odd, might have pushed you a little bit too far, so maybe split the difference. But do st keep holding the B. The important thing is. Now, Casals used to. You know, they used to do a little bit of kind of, da, 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 but they did it before the notes. Uh, so if you wanted to do a little of, of that, you could, but not, not, uh, not at the end of the note, but into the D. You could do a little lift. If you want to make it a little special, you could do it that way. But if you do it later in the D, then it doesn't work. It's not that there's a right way and a wrong way musically. There's a thousand right ways and there's, a hundred thousand wrong ways, you know, because it's like grammar. You can write, there's so many ways you can write a book or an essay. You put words together. There's almost limitless ways you could do it to make a great essay. And there's almost like, and then there's like exponentially more ways you could put the words together to make a bad essay. So, you know, you get the idea. So there's, it's just about following the grammar to be able to express your ideas. So there is a way to do it, but it's just a, it's got to be a little graceful and elegant in the style of Haydn, not just a but. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, so I don't want to oh, get it's too stuck in this. Let's play this again, and we'll go on. Good. Don't. You know how nicely you played the first one when it was slurred. <sighs> got to match that. Even though you change bow, gotta match that. Play that second one where you change bow. So and use use a little of the pluck to and, and you you can help a little bit with the bow too. Good. Go on. But, so these are two things. What do you say? It says. 
said, ba da 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 ba da 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 You know, it's the exact same statement down a pitch level, right? So you've got to show us that by making them kind of brothers in a way. And, but a little bit different. Like, I said this, I said this. You know, there, there's got to be some so. Okay. And just like in the Dvorak, when we talked about the opening, short phrase, short phrase, long phrase, uh, short phrase, and now, but goes into a. And okay, we'll get on to that. Oh, so. so I'll uh, play this. I get too much emphasis every time you change the bow. My part of it's probably zoom, but uh, uh, that's all smooth. That's one idea. Make that all one idea. Don't don't, don't let don't not too many elbows. Show me your fingering again. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so here's a place where we were talking about the coordination of the shift with respect to the bow. All right, two things. First of all, for your three to sound more in tune and better, just generally better, lift higher. Come more from above. Yeah. Now, I need to freeze the bow. So how do we do that? And then what happens when it, okay, so you practice with a freezing, right? But, okay, so you practice with the, uh, with the freezing, but then what happens when you actually play it? Well, you just a little, what I call like a stutter bow, you just what you really, so little you can't even hear it, but it's, there's this tiny little stutter in the bow to hide that slide, but you have to practice first. Try that for me. Good, do it again. Good, now try full speed. With, yeah, just now just play normally. Almost, yeah. There's a little, your bow's a little too soon for the shift, but it's very close. I need that fourth finger really there before the bow goes. Yeah, and the part of the reason is you're coming from the side, you're kind of sliding in from the side like this. I'm coming from above. To exaggerate, I mean, I don't mind to exaggerate the thumpiness because I know I can take it away, so. Then I. But the articulation like piano hammers. Da 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 don't try. Almost. Good. Something I want to say before I forget for everyone, practice shifting. One of the things that's not really covered in scales or in any of the etudes you have is shifting. So I ask all of you to make up, you can make up shifting exercises. There's one in that Starker Bikepi book, which is the... Something like that, and you keep... Something like that. You keep doing a different pitch level. Uh, that's one, but you could just make it up. You could just...
sliding the different notes, and then double. Seems like crazy hard at first, and then it's really easy. You practice it for like two weeks, and then it's easy. This will really help you because what happens, cellists get so behind, like the slide development gets so behind the rest of the other development, and it just, it's... whatever you want, but five minutes of sliding a day. Okay. Uh, let's do those and go on. This is solved by just knowing exactly where your musical goals are. And if you sing it, you probably sing it right. But what happens is if you let your bow habits dictate your phrasing, then it becomes because it feels good to bow there. But that's not really what you want. You want that's back to D major. This is Okay, let's go on to the next run. Good. Now, and again, when you practice the sliding, you'll get the timing. Of, you'll get the timing of when the elbow, because your elbow's a little late. You're doing harmonic there? Okay, so I, one thing I've learned is that violinists and guitarists use um, flat finger for harmonics. Cellists often try to do, try to like do just the tip of the finger. The more finger you've got on that harmonic, the safer it is. So, so I would actually like flat finger, my tip of my finger is actually touching the D string. Or at least some flatter on the finger with harmonics rather than more curved. Can you play for me? And good. And it shouldn't the timing. Just as if you sung it. There's a little bit of time to, but not too much. Because it's that's the music, right? That's the music that you want to bring out. Try that. Stop the bow for this. Stop the. the I don't want to hear this. The, the, because those three notes really belong to the next phrase. Good. And one, of the, one of the brilliant things Foreman did that took me a while to understand is... You'll see when you see the button, but let's go on. Now. something about additions for this piece um there's it's kind of a mess you know there was for a long time there was kind of like the old Gewehrt edition that uh the Gritzmacher monkeyed with and Gewehrt monkeyed with um Henley is the best thing that's out there but the problem with the Henley edition is that they took if you really want to understand what's in the Haydn manuscript you have to look at the piano part of the Henley look at the cello part that's above the piano part in the Henley because the Henley Gave it, they cleaned everything out of it, and then they gave it back to an editor who put everything right back in. So when I look at the Henley, I can't tell which slurs are in parentheses and which are for real from Haydn. So the simple thing, always with Henley editions, they don't edit the cello part when they put it above the piano part. So if you want to know what Haydn actually wrote um, in terms of slurrings and all that kind of stuff, because it's a lot less than what people traditionally do, um, 
look about look at the cello line above the piano part. One of those things. This is not actually slurred at all. All that stuff is separate, but it doesn't matter for now. I just want to we'll put that out there while people are listening. But, all right, play one more time for ba 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 and again, I need for this to speak, I need this is, yeah, exactly. You can play it without the bow. Now, and remember we talked about like when we had separate passages, we're having her do it with the bow. This one is actually, when I have to play it separate, when, when I, have to, I could sometimes, when I have to play it slurred, I sometimes practice separate. I don't know, it helps for whatever reason. It, it works, you know, when it, you have to play along, um, but, or you can practice without the bow. It's all just about lifting the fingers. If the fingers lift, they will fall. What goes up must come down. Just worry about the lifting and then let them go. Try again. Good. Good. And it's, don't connect things that don't belong connected. So this is a new phrase. The don't try it. It's hard and it doesn't make sense. Okay, well, I see tongue has reappeared, which means Sorry. the angel of time is upon us. But give me, just finish this part. We'll be done in a minute. Yeah. Um. Good. And you'll freeze the bow. Good, but you have to like the freeze the bow, like totally stop the bow. Click. Mm -hmm. Now go on, play me this part. I gotta. when I can um, because my because my wife told me it was stupid to like try to play the same note with two different fingerings and like be out of tune and so uh, when I can find it when I can choose a fingering that doesn't have to play the do a replace to, so I do um, let's see I just um, the, let's see if there's anything else I need to, uh, this, play me just this, from the end. All right, this is a place where a little vibrato will go a long way versus, just wiggle twice at the start of each double stop, it'll change your life. That one too. That first one is great, but each one. Good. And uh, this is the bow actually stops. And, uh, it's actually harder what you do where you don't stop the bow. Second time. Okay, good. A lot of things will be improved with better fingerings to make your life a lot easier. Um, so take a look. If you can't find it on the website, you can Ask me, just email me or I email Tong, someone else will find it for you. But it, it's somewhere there. It's under like music or scores or something. Okay, great to hear you. Good job. Thank you.